The people that attacked the Russian Mafia in 1989 were most recognized by the rubber masks they wore while murdering. However, there was an operative that didn't wear a mask, but instead wore a biker helmet to conceal his identity. And the story of this eponymous biker is filled with a mixture of confusion and fear. Let's take a look at what he does in game and try to determine his story. A thrill chaser, Biker heard about an exciting thrill ride from a local bartender. He signed up for a newsletter from an organization named 50 Blessings and suddenly began receiving messages on his phone that asked him to do seemingly innocent things, but were actually veiled assassination contracts. Initially, Biker is glad to comply with the request of the messages, filling his blood with an excitement he's never felt before. However, on May 13th, he abruptly decides he wants out of the contract killings. Interestingly, this is the same day that another agent gets a call to assassinate some political figures. The call mentions that someone else called in sick, implying Biker rejected this job due to its political nature. However, Biker claims he's bored with the calls when he visits the bartender that introduced him to the organization. Biker demands information and shoves the man to the floor. The man gives in, saying he knows of someone hiding out in a Chinese restaurant downtown that has more information. He gives Biker the address and says that now he's as good as dead. Biker makes his way to the Chinese restaurant and in a small dark room in the back, he finds the man the bartender was talking about. Biker grabs a man by the shirt and demands to know who's leaving the phone messages. The man quickly gives up information, saying he helped them set up a system at phone home to sweep their calls. He doesn't know who the leader is, but they seem to have a political agenda that terrified him. Satisfied with the information he's been given, Biker releases the man and leaves the restaurant. A few days later, Biker finds a message on his phone. Upset that the biker has been blowing off his assignments, the message says they will not tolerate further delays. In order to buy more time for his investigation, Biker complies with the message, killing Russian gangsters at a local arcade. Several days later, in the aftermath of a party held at his apartment, Biker wakes to find another message on his answering machine, again asking for his services. Fed up with the messages, Biker finally resolves to get to the bottom of them and makes his way to the phone home headquarters. He gets into their computer and finds the address where the calls are originating. At that moment, a man with a letterman jacket wearing a rooster mask enters the room. Biker tells the man to leave. But when the man rushes for a golf club in the corner, a visceral fight between the two breaks out. Eventually, Biker walks out of the building alive and makes his way back to his apartment. The very next day, Biker finds another message on his answering machine which doubles as a threat from the callers. However, Biker is unconcerned and makes his way to the address he found in the phone home computers. As he enters the building, he sees a janitor who immediately flees. He rushes after the man to find him flee into a nearby sewer. But before heading down, Biker notices a computer set up in their workshop. It's password protected, but using his Biker intuition, he deduces the password and finds the janitor's plan. They are using the 50 Blessings organization, the same one that Biker signed up for, to attack the Russian Mafia and assassinate members of the Russo-American Coalition in the hopes to topple the coalition. When Biker confronts them with this information, the janitors say they'll eventually get the country back on its own feet thanks to the help of powerful friends. Biker cuts them off, saying the janitors have wasted enough of his time. He exits the sewers, gets on his bike, and sets off. He realizes he can't return home or he'll face the wrath of 50 blessings, so instead he flees Miami to figure out his next step. However, out in the wilds of America, he has an encounter that completely changes him. A few years later, in 1991, the Russian Mafia has been effectively destroyed by the mass attackers sent by the janitors. Called the mass maniacs in the papers, the most infamous has been arrested by the police and is on trial for his crimes. The origin of the phone calls are a contentious point in the case, as the mass maniac claims he believes the Russian Mafia were making the calls and phone records indicate the calls originated from a club with ties to the Russian Mafia. But why would the Mafia attack their own members? Questions like this drive a local writer, Evan Wright, to try and find the truth behind the mass maniac killings. Evan gets a tip from a source in the police department, and as he sets out, 
he notices a peculiar man standing among the crowd gathered outside the courthouse. A man with blue hair wearing a neon pink jacket. Biker has returned to Miami. A few days later, Evan finds a message on his answering machine from someone saying they have information about the killings that he would like to hear. The caller tells Evan to meet him at a local bar. Evan shows up to see Biker sitting at the bar. However, this isn't the same man that fled Miami in 1989. He has disheveled hair and an unkempt beard, and his bloodshot eyes hint he's been sitting here all day drinking. There's a large scar on his face, which he possibly got from his fight with the masked man and phone home. Evan sits down and Biker tells him his story, about killing Russian gangsters, about signing up for 50 blessings, which he only remembers as patriotic bullshit about the weird phone calls, and about finding out who is behind them. However, he doesn't remember his conversation with the janitors, or discovering their plan. But he does remember the fear he felt, thinking there was something big behind it all. He says he went into hiding, and mentions that's where he met him. After this terrifying meeting, Biker lost his will to fight. He's cowered in the desert since then only emerging recently as the mass maniac trial heats up. Since he gave Evan the truth, he asks Evan for his reward money, mentioning he needs another drink. However, due to his state, Evan refuses to believe Biker's story, writing it off as the ramblings of a drunkard. Upset he wasn't believed, Biker screams at Evan to leave as he's done talking to him. Evan exits the bar, ensuring that 50 Blessings' plan is never revealed and assuring its completion. Even though he was able to find out the truth, Biker's fear of the truth and his attempts to hide from it eventually leads to 50 Blessing's success. Their plan eventually leads to the destruction of Miami and seemingly the rest of America. And we watch as the surviving protagonists of Hotline Miami are vaporized by the explosions. However, there is one character whose death is not explicitly shown. Maybe, in the aftermath of the bombings, he still wanders the wastelands of America, cursed with bearing the burden of the truth on his shoulders. If Biker could have overcome his fear, maybe 50 blessings could have been stopped, and the world spared nuclear tragedy. But that's the end of his story. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. But until next time, thank you for watching and see you later. Included among Jacket's extermination of the Russian Mafia is a confrontation with a man in a biker helmet. Jacket meets this man at the headquarters of a phone company, and after a visceral battle, he kills the man by taking his head clean off his shoulder. 